Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight we are going to be making a delicious baked good that is going to take you through the end of summer and into the month of September. Tonight we are going to be making keto blueberry crumble bars. So come along with me and let's get started. So the blueberry season is on the peak end and blueberries are plentiful in my grocery store right now at a very reasonable price. So I thought I would make a blueberry recipe. And it's just in time because it is the end of August and our local coffee chain is already selling their famous pumpkin spice latte. So we have to get in the end of summer as soon as we can. So cobblers, crumbles, and all of those kinds of creations have been around for quite a long time. The American colonists brought them over from Great Britain and they used to be served all times of day for breakfast. It wasn't until the late 19th century that things like crumbles and cobblers came to be known as a dessert. And it's a very easy dish, it's very homey, and like I said, it's going to finish using up your berries for uh, the end of summer. And you would not have to use just blueberries in this. You could use any type of berry that you like. So come along with me and let's get started. So you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you need about an eight quart saucepan. And I have a cup of fresh blueberries in here. You could use frozen but frozen will take a little longer to cook if you're going to use frozen and it will also provide a little more liquid so you'll have to compensate for that. The reason I'm doing fresh blueberries right now is because it is the end of August and uh, fresh blueberries are at the tail end of their season and they are inexpensive right now so that is what I am using. So to our blueberries I'm going to add two tablespoons of water. And then I'm going to turn my blueberries on quite high, almost completely to high, because we want these to get started on a low boil, because we are going to cook these blueberries. And as it starts to cook, I am going to start mashing them. I no longer have a potato masher, because I no longer have potatoes. But I'm going to use my whisk, and hopefully that will be sufficient. So to begin the preparation of the rest of our crumble, it's going to be crust basically on the bottom and then the crumbly streusel top over the blueberries. We can hear our blueberries starting to sizzle over here. So just give them a look to see. Just keep an eye on them. I'm going to keep an eye on them while I'm still talking to you. So I'm going to be using a 7x11 baking dish. You could use a 9x9, you could use a 9 by 12 but your crumble bars will be a little thinner that way but I have taken my dish and I have put a piece of parchment paper in it to fit and hang over I buy my parchment paper at the dollar store it can be kind of expensive if you buy it elsewhere but I buy mine at the dollar store um, and I have lightly sprayed it the idea behind this is when our crumble bars are cooled I will be able to lift the parchment paper out, set it down flat, and cut our bars. And that is why I'm doing this parchment paper step. So I'm gonna go back over to my blueberries because you can see they have started to boil. So I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. And they're just going to slowly simmer away for about 10 minutes until they're quite soft. And then I'll be able to mush them up a little bit. And then we're going to add a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of thickener. So looking at our blueberries again, everything is looking good. They are starting to break down a little bit and I am facilitating that with my wire whisk. Um, if you have a potato masher, you could do that with your potato masher too, but we don't need them completely broken down. We don't want blueberry sauce. We do still want a few whole blueberries in there. So I'm just going to let them go for about another five more minutes and then we'll add our sweetener and our thickener. Okay, so we've let our blueberries cook for about 10 minutes now and some of them are broken down and that's good. We are going to turn off the heat. So I'm going to use about a quarter cup 
or thereabouts of allulose. I'm using allulose in this simply because I have it. You could use erythritol, you could use monk fruit, whatever you would like. But I'm putting about two tablespoons and I'm just gonna whisk that in. And this is uh, powdered allulose. But you could use a granular um, natural sweetener in this step if that's what you had. And then the other thing that I'm going to put in is about a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. And xanthan gum just comes in little tiny pouches like this, and you don't need to use very much. And with xanthan gum, you wanna make sure that it's not bubbling. So I have turned my heat off. And you want to try and sprinkle evenly over your dish so that you don't create any lumps in it. And then we can whisk that in and the xanthan gum will just further thicken our blueberries as they sit almost like a, a gravy if you will or cornstarch if you were a carb eater that would have been what you would have added so we are using xanthan gum in its place and we are just going to let our blueberries cool We are now going to move on to the crumble part of our crumble bars. So for that, we are going to need almond flour, two cups. So that was two cups of almond flour. I'm also going to use three quarters of a cup of unsweetened coconut flakes. That's three quarters of a cup. It's not really going to give it much of a coconut taste necessarily. It's just going to give us a texture, that flaky texture that a crumble is supposed to have or crumble bars will have. So we have that. Now we need our sweetener and I'm going to use Sucrum Gold. I've got two bags here because I'm working on one and I'm not sure if I had enough in it. And I'm going to use the Sucrum Gold in this step because to me traditionally cobblers and crumbles and things such as that do really nice with a brown sugar style product and because this is a brown sugar alternative it lends itself very well for this type of dish if you do not have a brown sugar alternative you could absolutely use a swerve or a monk fruit erythritol you could use a granular product you could use a powdered product whatever you'd like in here but i have this and i'm going to use it because i would have used a brown sugar if i were making a traditional crumble I'm using about a half a cup and I'm just kind of mixing everything as I put it in just with my clean hands so I am going to add about two tablespoons of coconut flour this is just going to give our crumble bars a, a a bit of crumbliness, if you will, since it's crumble, because coconut flour adds a, a, just a touch of dryness to our almond flour. It's not essential, but if you do have it, it is nice in this dish. So once again, I'm hand sifting this. Okay, so I have all of our dry ingredients. Now I'm going to add our butter, and that is going to make our shortbread crumble consistency that we're looking for. So I need six tablespoons, which is one stick of butter, and it's melted. And before I get too far mixing that, I am going to add a little bit of extract. I'm using butter extract here. You could use um, almond extract. You could use vanilla extract. Just just a little something to flavor our crumble. And I'm just working everything around, getting it all incorporated, and you'll see when I get done that it is indeed a crumble. It is crumbly, and that is what we are going for. Okay, it's all incorporated. So I'm going to take half of our crumble mixture and I'm going to set it in the bottom 
of my greased parchment paper. So we just want about half. And just eyeball it. And we're just going to take our time and slowly spread that around. And it's loud. Because there's parchment paper down. just want to press it in and make our bottom crust. Just trying to be as even as you can, but this is a homey dessert, so no worries. I covered that little hole. All right, so I've pressed it in the bottom. Now we are going to put this into the oven that we already preheated. And we're gonna cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes just to get our base settled down and get kind of the butter to solidify and make our bottom crust. So in the oven we go, once again, that's 350. And we are going to cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes. It's been in for 10 minutes, and that has just given a, it a chance to set up. So I am going to bring it out and let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then we are going to assemble the rest of our crumble bars. Okay, so it's time to finish assembling our dish and get it put into the oven for its final bake. So we are going to take our cooled blueberries and you can see that they've gotten quite thick, which is what we wanted. So I'm just going to get them all out and I'm just going to put them right in the center of my dish for us to spread around. And I'm just using a spatula to get all my blueberry out. So I'm just going to take my spatula and I'm going to spread this as evenly as I can. Our crust has cooled for about 10 minutes, so it, it's still a little warm, but not super warm. And I'm just trying to get all of our blueberries spread all around our bar so that every piece will have blueberry. And I think I'll get my hot pad here help me turn just to make sure that I get every bit with blueberry to the best of my ability right to the edge okay so we have our blueberry layer spread out and now I'm going to take our remaining crumble mixture and I'm just going to start dropping it on our crumble here and I'll just show you I'm just going to start dropping it kind of evenly and we're going to come back and press this down in a minute but right now I'm just trying to get it all spread out as evenly as I can this parchment paper is going to be my friend eventually but during preparation it's not the greatest you can really smell the butter extract in here this would also be very good with almond extract. The blueberries and almonds go very well together. You could also put some nuts in this if you wanted, some slivered almonds or some pecans or something like that if you wanted. Okay, so the rest of our crumble mixture is on. And then we wanna kind of press it in because we want it to really adhere to our bars when it cooks. We don't want it to just all crumble, <laughs> no pun intended, off the top. So we do kind of want that to get in with our filling a bit so that when it bakes, it's really gonna bake in there well and make a real true topping to our crumble bars. So just press it in. I'm going to 
going all the way to the edge. Can't forget about our edges. Okay, that looks good. Our blueberries are kind of peeking through, which is what we want. So we are going to put it back into our oven that is still at 350 degrees, and we are going to bake this for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, back in it goes. And once again, that's 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, I ended up cooking mine for 25 minutes. So this is what it looks like, and it's lightly browned on top. So I'm going to get it out, and I'm going to let it cool for probably about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to remove it from the pan and we'll slice it into bars and let CJ have a taste. Okay, I'm going to attempt to So I took my parchment paper that was folded into the pan and I just took the handles. That's why we made it as large as we did to fit it over the edges of the pan because then you can just lift it and kind of hold it taut and put it down. So now, theoretically, we'll be able to cut this into bars easier. That's the idea, anyway, we'll see. So I'm going to attempt to make 12 bars out of this. I'm gonna just cut some median lines here. I'm trying to keep my knife as smooth as possible. Okay, so I have the four vertical cuts, and then you can just turn your paper like that. And once again, I am going to just do some hesitation cuts here just to see if that's where I want to go. Yes. Okay. Okay. Clean off my knife once again, just for my finger. Okay, now I'm going to get my little tiny spatula and I'm going to put some on a plate and we'll let CJ have a taste. Hi, CJ. Hi. It's time for some blueberries. Yep. Blueberry crumble bars. Yep. They look like they were easy to make. I was just holding the camera. <laughs> I guess everything looks easy from that angle. Yeah, but they were not very. It didn't look like they were that complicated. No. They are crumbly. Mhm. Mm yeah, good. Much flavor, but not super sweet. Mhm. -mm. Not super sweet at all. It lets the berry do the actual talking. It's not obnoxious. It's not overly sweetened. It's mm -hmm. more like just the natural sweetness of the berry. That's a good description. But it's not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but it is sweet because of the berry. So yeah, it's a nice little treat. Nice to have around the house. Probably be really good with a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I like it. Good job, baby. Thank you. Bye-bye blueberries in this. You could use any type of berry that you like. So come along with me and let's get started. Thanks for joining us again tonight. We hope that you enjoyed making these blueberry crumble bars. We hope that you will come back and see us again and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We upload new recipes every Sunday and we also have keto conversations on Wednesdays. Sometimes it's ketogenic food unboxings, sometimes it's what we eat. We try and vary our content as much as we can, all in keeping with the ketogenic lifestyle. So please hit the notification bell so that you know when we have uploaded a new video. We are also on social media. 
and we release um, photographs and um, teaser recipes, other recipe ideas, things that we're personally eating, and uh, past recipes as well. So that's uh, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and that's all CJ's Keto Kitchen. Please also head on over to our blog, that's cjsketokitchen.com, and there will be the recipe, and it is printable. It will have all of your ingredients, any other information that you need. I try and put a few interesting facts about what I have made, and there are some very interesting facts about blueberries that you won't want to miss. So please head on over there, and come on back and see us again next week, and we'll see you then.